dear students this is dr s m indumathi assistant professor from the department of biotechnology school of bio and chemical engineering satibama institute of science and technology today i am here for a presentation about toxins and tetanus firstly we'll uh, look into the morphology cultural characteristics and biochemical reactions of clostridium tetani tetanus is a disease that is commonly caused by an organism called clostridium tetani which is a soil bacterium it is gram positive bacilli shaped organisms they are motile with peritrichous flagella that is flagella all over the cell and uh, they are non capsulated while they are sporing which means the spores are present in the terminal ends of the bacilli Uh, giving a characteristic drumstick shape appearance and they are bulging also uh, coming to the media uh, organisms can grow well on ordinary media itself but if the media could be enriched with uh, blood serum or egg uh, it would support the growth of uh, effluent growth of uh, the organisms uh, on blood agar alpha hemolysis uh, starts to be uh, seen which continues to be uh, beta hemolysis also and other medias include robertson's cooked meat broth in case of deep agar shake cultures uh, the organisms the colonies are uh, they appear to be spherical fluffy balls and in case of gelatin stab cultures a characteristic fir tree shaped appearance is seen on mcconkey's medium greenish fluorescence is observed on the media coming to the biochemical reactions uh, clostridium tetani are indole positive mrvp negative no sugar fermentation is seen as well as no nitrate reduction is seen the toxins tetanus produces actually three powerful toxins but uh, the two toxins are generally explained not the third one the first toxin is called tetanolysin which is a hemolysin and the next toxin uh, is called tetanospasmin uh, which is a potent neurotoxin the third toxin is also a neurotoxin but it has no relevance in pathogenesis and so it is unexplained uh, and it is left as such uh, so talking about this hemolysin or tetanolysin uh, it is oxygen and heat labile uh, and uh, they are antigenically similar to that of the hemolysins produced by other species of clostridium and even these hemolysins have no relevance in pathogenesis then we have this tetanospasmin the most important toxin that is the causative agent of tetanus uh, it is oxygen stable while heat labile it could be deactivated at just 67 degrees celsius for 5 minutes and this toxin is plasmid encoded uh, this toxin could be toxided on combination with uh, formaldehyde and uh, it is a rich uh, rich antigen so uh, it could be neutralized with antitoxins this is an exotoxin so on release from the bacilli the toxin autolyses itself to form a heterodimer the heterodimer is composed of two components one is a heavy chain and another one is a light chain the heavy chain is of molecular weight 93000 while the light chain is of molecular weight 52000 the minimum lethal dose of humans is just 130 nanograms and this toxin tetanospasmin it resembles strychnine in its effects uh, strychnine is a toxic pesticide basically it causes spasticity and muscle cramps when injected into human hosts so as it resembles strychnine in its effect i mean tetanospasmin they block the synaptic inhibition in the spinal cord especially at the junctions where gaba and glycine are used as neurotransmitters gaba is nothing but gamma amino butyric acid uh, as it blocks the synaptic inhibition uncontrolled spread of impulses get initiated anywhere in the central nervous system this will lead to the tonic muscle spasm muscle rigidity and spasticity throughout the body and if the toxin is sent through oral route the toxin gets digested by the digestive enzyme so it is deactivated while the routes like subcutaneous intravenous and intramuscular are equally effective talking about the disease tetanus tetanus is also called as lockjaw and it is characterized by tonic muscle spasms we have two types of muscles facic muscles and tonic muscles tonic muscles are basically the background muscles they are slow contracting muscles when these muscles undergo cramps and spasms uh, that is an important or that is a characteristic feature of tetanus tetanus generally spreads through various uh, modes like puncture wounds normal wounds abrasions or cuts on the skins uh, easily allows the bacteria to proliferate because an anaerobic environment would be created in case of puncture wounds so that the organism which is an anaerobe uh, grows very well 
in those kinds of wounds. Uh, tetanus rarely occurs in case of laboratory procedures because uh, when asepsis, when the sterility is lacking in case of surgical procedures, during those times tetanus could happen. Tetanus could also be seen during local separations like ear infections. If there is any local uh, pus forming lesions through that also tetanus could uh, occur. The example would be autogenic tetanus that is uh, tetanus in the ear. And then uh, tetanus could also be uh, seen associated with unhygienic practices as well as rituals like circumcision as well as ear boring. Tetanus rarely spreads through unsterile injections and needles. So the incubation period of tetanus is basically 2 days to several weeks but on an average it is just 6 to 12 days. So we have 3 types of tetanus, the local tetanus, ascending tetanus as well as descending tetanus. Local tetanus, when the toxin is injected intramuscularly in one of the hind limb, tonic muscle spasms start to occur in that particular hind limb alone because it involves the motor neurons that are located locally and these motor neurons present at that area is connected to the spinal cord. So that is called local tetanus. Only they cause tonic muscle spasms of that particular location. That is called local tetanus. Coming to the ascending tetanus, the toxin which has been injected into one hind limb has already produced tonic spasms in one hind limb. That would project to the next hind limb, then it goes to the trunk as well as the uh, four limbs, uh, which means the disease uh, ascends up the spinal cord. So that is called ascending form of tetanus. And if the toxin is injected intravenously, uh, the tonic muscle spasms and rigidity, spasticity develops in the muscles of head and neck and the disease starts to descend down. It starts from the head and neck and it spreads till the legs. So that is called descending tetanus. And uh, the case mortality of tetanus is around uh, 80 to 90 percent when there is no proper treatment available. Even if proper treatment is given, uh, the case mortality would be uh, 50 percent, 15 to 50 percent. Especially this uh, tetanus neonatorum, that is uh, tetanus that affected a newborn child as well as uterine tetanus, tetanus of the uterus. Uh, these have high uh, case mortalities that is up to 70 to 100 percent. Uh, tetanus is often seen uh, in developing countries where the environment, where the climate is uh, a bit warm, where the soil is very fertile, where so much of cultivation happens uh, and where humans and animals live in close association with each other and where there are uh, unhygienic practices and rituals followed as well as the medical facilities as medical facilities are poor. Talking about the treatment, there are three types of treatment we can give to tetanus. The first thing is surgical prophylaxis, the next is antibiotics and the third one is immunization. So in case of surgical prophylaxis, we generally uh, excise the wounds, the necrotic lesions as well as the foreign bodies and the blood clots. So if there is any local wounds or necrosis seen, that would be radically excised to prevent from uh, the organisms getting an entry into the host cells. Then we have antibiotics, uh, long acting penicillin, metronidazole as well as erythromycin 500 mg would be preferred uh, and for topical applications bacitracin and neomycin would be employed. Then in case of immunization we have two types again passive and active immunization. So in case of passive immunization we have uh, anti tetanus serum and human anti tetanus immunoglobulin. So this uh, anti tetanus serum is also obtained from equine horses so it has to be uh, looked upon its hypersensitivity reactions when injected into human beings. Uh, so when compared to ATS people started to prefer TIG but TIG has been obtained from human volunteers which means the toxin will be injected into humans and their uh, anti serum against tetanus toxin would be taken out but the limitations of TIG is another uh, serious threat for uh, this tetanus. Uh, so people started preferring this ATS itself when compared to TIG because of its limited presence. And in case of active immunization, uh, tetanus toxoids, I mean the toxin is allowed to react with formaldehyde again and it would be toxoided. Tetanus is also given as uh, TT injections, tetanus toxoid or uh, as uh, trivalent preparations like DPT, dip diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus vaccines. And the reference for uh, this presentation is taken from the textbook of microbiology by Anantha Narayanan and Panikkar. We have reached the conclusive slide. Thank you students for patiently watching this.